Hey guys, welcome to the Hersey house. My name is Jeremiah Hersey. This is my first video, so thank you for checking us out. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Power BI and one of the cool options that I found for my business, um, the pull from a file folder source option. So we're going to take a look at Power BI now. <clears throat> so this is the general Power BI screen and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be pulling from a folder source option. Now this is not a traditional file source, uh, but you can look over here at get data. And we're going to pull this down and we're going to select the more option. So what this allows us to do, Power BI pulls from over 200 data sources. And so we're going to pull from the folder option. Now, the reason that we're going to do this um, is because if we go back um, and let's say for my business, um, I have my employee type in his time, uh, how many hours that he worked for each night and put it in an Excel file. Now, of course, we can click the Excel option um and i can pull the time card for the week of november 1st and pull it into power bi um, and of course i can manipulate the data as always and select the sheet but the thing is every day that he submits this time card i'm gonna have to come back into power bi upload it change it to look the way that i want and that's just very, very time consuming. So the folder option or pull from folder option allows it to look like a file watch. And basically, as you add files, it's going to manipulate it. So what we're going to do is instead of pulling in each Excel worksheet every time my employee logs in, we're going to use the folder option. Now this is a great option uh, for if you're monitoring uh, certain file folders that's periodic like the time card instance in my case um, and it'll just really keep you from having to go back and re-edit files every single time that it's pulled especially if it's done once twice three times a day you're not gonna have time to go back and pull every single file so as long as the file is inside the folder it's going to allow us to pull that information. So I'm going to select my folder, my time cards folder. And so this is going to search for all the files that are inside this folder. We're going to hit transform data. And so as you see right here, uh, it says binary. Right here. Okay, so there's your binary option, um, but binary is just a code for zeros, ones, and twos. It really doesn't mean anything to us. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually use this button right here, the combined files button. And so what that's going to do is it's going to uh, display a couple options for us. It's going to check, hey, is this okay? So we're going to select sheet one. Click OK. Obviously, if there's more sheets in there, we would pull more sheets out. All right, so here's our information that's in our Excel file. So there's my employee, Austin. He worked six hours on the 6th. He worked eight hours on the 7th. And so we can clean this up a little bit, right? We don't really need the source name. So we'll just remove the column. And then we have column one, column two, column three. Well, notice that this first row is actually my column headers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this option right here. Use first row as headers. OK, so once again, that's in this little box right there. Use first row as headers and notice that it brings up to the top. So we got the name, the total hours and the date. 
So now it looks good, right? Well, if we put another file into this, right, we would have to, man if we pulled another Excel file in, uh, we would have to manipulate manipulate this every single day because, right, we have the name, the total hours, we we'll have to move the header and, and stuff like that. Um, so if we actually go to this transform sample file right here on the left, uh, we can actually change it for the sample file and then every time it brings it in, we don't have to worry about it. So once again, we're going to click this button right here and use the first row as headers. But notice when I do that, that I get an error right here, right in my time card query. So let's check it out. Let's see what's going on. Now, Power BI is a metadata rigid structure. So it's following the names, the exact names of what things are. So we have a couple of different ways we can do this. First thing is we have our function bar right here. Right. Um, we also have the advanced editor, which brings up everything. But let's take a look over here at our applied steps and see what happened where we went wrong, right? So we have these options right here. So if I check, it's working, it's working, it's working, it's working. It's not working. So something happened right in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these steps and see if we can fix it. So once again, it's still not working. There's an error, but we're down to the original error um source right so if we go up here to advanced editor notice that it pulls up all of our information right so it pulls up everything that we did these are all of our steps but a couple things that we need to consider right so it's saying change type to column one column two in column three. Well, we don't have a column one, column two, column three anymore, right? So what happens is uh, this held on to the logic that we previously explored. So in order to fix this, what we're going to do is we're going to put our actual names that we chose as our column headers. So the first one was name. The second one was total hours and the third one was the date now if we change this it should allow that error to be fixed total hours date table wasn't found Oh, it's all right. Stay look. So remember, I just said it was metadata rigid. I had a capital D for date, but I have a lowercase d on my transform sample file. So notice that because this is a lowercase d, and if I put an uppercase d right here, it gave me that error, but once again, it's metadata rigid. So if I have a lowercase d for date, I need to have a lowercase d for date in my formula bar. And notice now it's working again uh, in our time card and our transform sample file. So once again, I, I want to remove the source name. I really don't care about that. And my file looks good now. Now, the cool part about uh, this file from folder option is that as I add time cards in there, now that I've kind of set it up, it's going to manipulate that and it's going to it's going to format it to the way that I've already set up. Right. So let's go in here. Let's say that Austin works a second week. Right. So. Here's week two of November. I'm going to drop it into my time card folder. Right. And that's where all of our time cards go. We're going to go back to the power query. And notice when I refresh the preview right here at the top, boom, I have 11.6, 11.7, 11.13, 11.14. It's all formatted. Uh, there's no errors or anything like that. So this is a great option for people that are using uh, basic text files. You're using Excel spreadsheets um, and you're going to be adding that into the folder every single day or every week 
whatever the case might be. So this is a great option for that. And so that's why it's called so similar to a file watch is because uh, it watches the folder for any new files. And as it uh, as files get added to that folder, uh, it will refresh. And of course, your data will now populate. So a couple different things that um, we learned today. But uh, other than that, thank you for joining us. And thank you for joining me. Uh, I say us because uh, we're a team at Pragmatic Works. Um, and hope to see you guys next time. Thanks.